Hi there, my name is Jason Harlow. In today's video, we'll go through the main points of the first two sections from Chapter 6 from Wolfson. In Section 6.1, we will introduce the concept of energy, and in Section 6.2, we'll discuss a specific kind of energy, work. The quote of the day, which you can see above, is the is from the introduction to the chapter. Energy is a fundamental aspect of the universe, a substance akin to and every bit as real as matter itself. Let's start with an analogy. If you have a cup of coffee, for example, and spill it on the floor, it might spread over a large area and some of it may soak into your shoes, but you probably believe in a conservation of coffee principle, which is that the coffee was not created or destroyed when the cup spilled. Energy is the same way. Physicists believe that energy is conserved in any closed system, meaning that when things happen, the energy may shift around and change its appearance, but the same amount of energy is always there. An exact statement of the principle of conservation of energy is energy cannot be created or destroyed. It may be transformed from one form into another, but the total amount of energy never changes. In order to apply the principle of conservation of energy, the first step is to define a system. So here below is a big collection of objects. We might draw a boundary around this guy and his umbrella and call that the system. By this definition, everything outside that system is called the environment. And out in the environment are all these other things like the clouds, the sun, the earth below, and this power plant over here. Within the system, there can be different forms of energy, like maybe the springs inside this umbrella or the chemical energy inside this the food in this guy's stomach and energy can flow in or out of the system when this guy and his umbrella interact with the environment for example if the Sun heats him up we say that the energy has gone from the Sun into the system increasing the energy of the system keeping track of all the energy that flows within a system or in and out of a system is an important tool in physics that will help us solve a lot of practical problems. Let's think about energy sources. When you plug your phone into the wall to recharge the battery, where does that energy come from? Well, here in Toronto, the electrical energy in power outlets comes from a company called Toronto Hydro, which receives a lot of its energy from electrical turbines in waterfalls, such as Niagara Falls. The energy in waterfalls actually starts in the sun. The energy in sunlight evaporates water on the ocean. The water falls as rain. Rain flows into rivers and into generator turbines and then back to the sea to repeat the cycle. So in that sense, your phone is mostly solar powered. And there are other ways that the sun indirectly, indirectly supplies us with energy. When ground terrains and water are heated different amounts by sunlight, it generates pressure differences in the air, which leads to wind and weather. Wind energy can be captured by turb turbines and converted to electrical energy as well. And Sunlight can even be directly converted into electrical energy by solar panels. It turns out that more energy from the sun hits Earth in one hour than all of the energy consumed by humans in an entire year. Okay, moving on to the next section now, we are going to focus on the simplest, most basic form of energy called work. Work in its simplest form is force times distance. So we can write 
W for work equals F sub X times delta X. So two things will occur every time work is done. A force will be applied to something and that something will move some distance. For example, this guy is pushing the car along. He is doing work. As you can see, he's even sweating. If he pushes the car with a force of 10 newtons, for example, and the car moves 10 meters, then the amount of work he does is 10 newtons times 10 meters, or 100 newton meters. The SI unit of work comes from this equation. If force is in newtons and distance is in meters, then the SI unit of work is newtons times meters. This unit has been given its own special name in physics. It is named after James Joule, and it is called the Joule. So, for this guy pushing with a force of 10 newtons over 10 meters, you would calculate that he does 100 joules of work. Let's do a quick test to see if you've got it. If you push twice as hard against a stationary wall, the amount of work you do on the wall, A quadruples, like by a factor of four, B doubles, C remains constant but non-zero, D remains constant at zero, or E is halved. Think about that, press pause on the video, and when you're ready, resume the video and I'll tell you the answer. The correct answer is D. It turns out that when computing work, it doesn't matter how hard you push against something if that thing is not moving. If there is no distance, then delta x is zero, and the work you do on the wall is zero. Let's look at some examples from the text. This guy is pushing a car, and the car moves in the exact same direction as the force he applies to the car. In this case, the work is simply the force he pushes times the distance the car moves while he is pushing it. Here is a woman pulling her suitcase in the airport. The force she applies is at a diagonal, but the suitcase moves exactly sideways in the x direction, so the force and the displacement are not in the same direction. In this case, it is only the component of the force she applies in the direction of the displacement that does any work. So the work is the x component of the force she applies to the suitcase times the displacement of the suitcase in the x direction, delta x. This waiter is carrying a tray along at a constant velocity from the kitchen toward the dining area. The force that he applies to the tray is directly upwards in the y direction, and the displacement is exactly sideways in the x direction. The force is perpendicular to the displacement. In this case, the x component of the force is zero. The displacement is in the x direction, and the work is zero. Now, work is a scalar, meaning that it doesn't have any direction. But work can have a positive or negative sign, and this is important. Positive work means that the displacement and the force are both in the same direction, or the force at least has a positive component in the direction of the displacement. In this case, the force is trying to speed up the object, so it's kind of adding energy, which corresponds to doing positive work on the object. Negative work means that the displacement and the force are in opposite directions, or that the force at least has a negative component in the direction of the displacement. This could happen if, as shown here, the object had an initial velocity to the right and the force was to the left. In this case, the force is trying to slow down the object, so it's kind of subtracting energy, which corresponds to doing negative work. So here's a question for you. For which of these following situations is the work done on a soccer ball positive? A, 
you carry the ball out to the field walking at a constant speed. B, you kick the stationary ball starting it flying through the air. Or C, the ball rolls along the field gradually coming to a halt. Think about that, press pause, and when you're ready, resume the video and I'll tell you the answer. The correct answer is B. When you kick the ball, you're applying a forward force to it and it's speeding up. So that's positive work. If you were just carrying the ball at a constant speed, that's zero work. And if the ball rolls along coming to a stop, you'd say that the earth does negative work on the ball because it's slowing down. Mathematically, work can be conveniently characterized using the scalar product, a way of combining two vectors to produce a scalar that depends on the vector's magnitudes and the angle between them. The scalar product of two vectors a and b is defined as the magnitudes of a times the magnitude of b times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. Sometimes the scalar product is called the dot product, and I would read this equation as a dot b equals a b cos theta. So, to summarize, we have this one very simple looking equation. When a constant force f is applied to an object that moves and the displacement of the object is delta r, the work done by this force on the object is f dot delta r.